I love that. The people, the power, and the machine, and the idea of tech for good. And it's on that topic of tech for good that I wanted to share a story with you today of how we're using a lot of the technologies you've been hearing about uh, yesterday, and you'll hear more about through the rest of today, and how we're working with the World B Project to apply them to solving the problem of a drastic decline in bee populations around the world. Now, I'm going to do this using the technology, so we're going to um, have some augmented reality, make it a bit more interactive. So I'm going to ask my augmented reality magical assistant to join me on stage. Simon, I'm not quite sure where you are. Fabulous. Here he comes. And Simon is going to build for us right now a beehive on stage. So I can take you through a journey, a day in the life of a beehive. Now, why should you care about bees in the first place? 70% of our food crops, 70% of all the food we eat is pollinated by bees. In the UK, 17 species of bee is now extinct and 25 more are endangered. In the United States, a shocking 50% decline in bee populations has occurred in the last five years. This is truly an existential crisis for all of us. No plants means no oxygen. No crops means no food. So here we have a beehive. And much like in your businesses, what we can do with analytics and IoT is we can put sensors on our beehive. And this one has some sensors. From where you're looking on the left-hand side, you can see our KPI panel. And we're monitoring the health of this beehive. We're monitoring the temperature. We're monitoring the weight. And we're listening to the audio signals of the bees as they're humming, which you can hear there, hopefully, from where you are. On top of the hives, together with the World Bee Project, we've also placed sensors so that we can tell what the environmental conditions are like in the immediate environment. And uh, I think it's going to rain. I think I've just got a note that it's going to rain. There we go. It is London, after all. Bees don't fly in the rain, by the way. Very wise, huh? So we're able to tell the environmental conditions around the hive, and this can tell us important things about what might be affecting bee health. I mentioned temperature. The temperature in the hive can drop, as we see here. Now, this could mean that the queen has died, for example. There it goes. The, the hive would normally be about 34, 35 degrees temperature, very steady temperature in the summer when the bees aren't hibernating. And if we're alerted as a beekeeper, to a reduction in temperature, then we know something is wrong. Perhaps the bees are, are sick, or as I mentioned, the queen herself might have died. One of the other amazing things I've learned about bees while working on this project is that bees are actually shipped around the country to pollinate our crops. In the United States, they actually take 18 wheelers and ship managed hives to California to make almonds, back up to the East Coast to make blueberries, pollinate blueberries, absolutely incredible industry, and over $170 billion of crops are produced just through bee pollination that's all left to chance today, left to nature. So let's learn a little bit more about the bees. Let's have a look inside the hive. We can do that, Simon. So we're going to pull up one of these frames here and take a look. So in the hive, you can see the um, key players in our story, the key actors, the key employees, in fact, the queen bee being number one. We've all heard about the queen bee. Her job is to fertilize eggs. She's the only bee that can do that. And she also emits a pheromone, a smell, that maintains hive stability. A little bit like, I guess, a mission statement or, uh, or an employee get-together. She's keeping everybody focused. Secondly, we've got the nurse bees. The nurse bees take care of the queen. They're a little bit like, um, I don't know, your personal gym instructor, if you're lucky enough to have one. They're making sure she's healthy. And we'll talk more about them in a minute. Thirdly, there's the drone bees. Now, the drone bees only have one job in life. Any idea what that is? To mate with the queen. That's it. They don't even have a sting, so they can't protect the hive even. But they're a very important part of the colony. And then finally, the worker bees. That's like all of us, I think. We're all the multitaskers. Worker bees clean the hive, they forage, they protect the hive, and they also find new hive locations when the hive decides to swarm. And in fact, on that note, let's talk a little bit about swarming. 
So bees will swarm when they run out of space in the hive. And one of the ways we can tell whether they're going to swarm is by listening to audio signals. So we're going to take a look here and see if we can... Oh, there we go. We've got some pre-swarm audio signals. Now, how do we know? We know that they're about to swarm because the nurse bees put the queen on a diet so that she can fly and leave the hive. And to put her on a diet, they chase her around the hive and they're flapping their wings a little more at night time. And we can pick up that change in audio signal. And that will warn us up to two to three weeks ahead of time that the bees are about to swarm. Now, if you're a beekeeper, much like a CEO, you want to keep your employees. In this case, you want to keep your bees, hence the name, beekeeper. I don't want to lose my bees. I won't be able to pop pollinate my crops. So it's very important that we're alerting beekeepers of a pre-swarm situation so they can take remedial action. So unfortunately, we were a little late in this case, and it looks like the bees are about to swarm. There they go. Glad they're not real. I'm actually allergic to bees, so if I got stung, it wouldn't be pretty. So there they go, swarming. And uh, we found them a nice tree over here. And they're going to go swarm on the tree. So there was actually a fascinating piece of work um, done much earlier this century by an Austrian scientist. Uh, and he uh, found out that the bees actually have something called a waggle dance. And the waggle dance is how they communicate between each other. It's their conversation. And when they do that, they communicate the new location for the next hive. But as I said, if we've warned the beekeeper, then he can walk up to where the bees have settled, potentially, if he's only found out last minute, and he can scoop the bees into a new hive. Or if he's warned early enough, then he can take preventative measures like add more frames, perhaps, to the hive, and thereby keep his bees. So you can see there's a huge parallel here in business. If you're able to sense signals, uh, perhaps social media signals about changing consumer behavior, or you're able to pick up signals about an unhappy employee, you can also take steps to make sure that they're happy and that they want to stay in your hive or your business. So now this is the magic of augmented reality. So uh, we're going to be able to get these bees back. And I'm going to ask them to go back in the hive with a wave of my hand. It's like being at Hogwarts. I've got some magic. So as well as swarming, one of the other things that can um, affect a hive and which beekeepers and the bee industry are obviously very keen to prevent is any kind of damage to the community, to the colony, by pests or by any kind of um, predator. Now, there is a particularly pervasive predator called the Asian hornet. Now, as you can imagine, the European bees, they don't really, they don't really know how to defend themselves against the Asian hornet. In our work with the World Bee Project, we found a way to identify the hornet as it approaches the hive using visual analytics. So here comes a hornet now, I think. Let's take a look. There you go. You can see the hornet. So we found out, actually, during our work that using visual analytics to identify the hornet was quite an expensive way to do it. And in fact, we can still do it with audio signals alone because we know that a hornet's wings flap more slowly than a bee's. So we're able to identify it through the audio signal. And again, a beekeeper could take preventative action, perhaps putting a cover over the hive again, or other remedies to make sure that the bees, particularly European bees, who can't defend themselves against this threat, are protected. If these were Asian bees, they would do something called thermoballing. They've learned how to fend off this predator. And they would surround the hornet, and they heat it to death. It's because bees can survive two, temperature, two degrees higher in temperature than a hornet can. So yeah, that's nature. So fantastic. These bees have managed to repel our hornet, thank goodness. And uh, everything returns to normal in the hive. So working with the World Bee Project, what we've been doing at Oracle is taking all of this data and putting it into a global hive network and then moving it into the Oracle Autonomous Database so that we can use Oracle Analytics Cloud to monitor all of these KPIs and metrics that are coming out of the hives. And part of the vision is to build a global hive network so we can do comparisons between these hives. Now, one of the other ways we want to get information into the global hive network and into the Autonomous Database is not just through IoT sensors and analytics such as we've seen here, but also it's important to do visual inspection of the hive. 
So working with the World Bee Project, we've developed a uh, bee digital assistant. We call it the bee bot. And uh, let me show you how that's going to work. So I'm going to be the beekeeper in this story. And we're going to kick start up our chat bot, our bee bot. Welcome to the bee bot assistant. I am listening. What and would you like to do? I'd like to do a brood inspection, please. Just to make sure I understand, you'd like to record your brood status? Yes, that's right. Which beehive do you want to record? My London one, Chelsea 2. Let's record your beehive's brood. Do you see eggs? Yes, I can see some eggs. Please tell me the volume of the drone cells in your beehive. Is it low, medium or high? It's low. Please tell me which brood pattern it is from the following options. Very patchy, a little spotty or compact and uniform. It's compact and uniform. Can you see larvae? Yes, I can see larvae. I am about to record the brood inspection and I want to make sure I got it right. Beehive Chelsea 2, brood eggs spotted, yes, brood larvae spotted, yes, brood pattern, compact and uniform, drone cells low. Is it all correct? Yes, that's correct. Recording your brood was a success. Also, remember I can record your queen if spotted. Anything else today? No, thank you. Thanks for using Beebot. Hope to hear from you soon. You definitely will. Fantastic. So that's how a digital assistant can help if you're in a scenario where you're wearing, for example, protective clothing, as beekeepers are, or perhaps you're operating in field service and, again, wearing bulky equipment and you can't input data yourself on a mobile phone or other tablet, for example. Using a digital assistant, you can still ingest that data into the database and it can be part of the overall analytics that you use in your projects. So the World Bee Project, which is a social enterprise based here in the UK, set out to achieve a vision of connecting all of the world's beehives together and provide this kind of analytics so that we could work together with researchers and scientists to find out why there are these declining populations of bees in certain locations and burgeoning populations in other locations. This is critically important for, for our own food security and it's also critically important for the livelihoods of the millions of smallhold farmers that exist around the world who not only need to make the crops to sell and have a living, but we also need to eat. For those of you that love flowers, almost all our flowers are pollinated by bees. Blueberries, strawberries, cocoa, coffee, melons, almonds, none of them would exist if we can't make sure that bee populations thrive. So at Oracle, it's been our absolute pleasure to work with the World Bee Project and start to build this global hive network. And my purpose in telling you this story today was really hopefully to inspire you and engage you to think differently about how you can use technology, much as Rob was talking about. How can you use this technology in your business? And that requires you to think differently about the possibilities. So I hope that you've been as, as inspired as I was working with the World Bee Project. And in fact, they have a booth out on the trade show floor there. They'd love it if you'd come and say hello. If you'd like to donate to their incredible cause, they're at theworldbeeproject.org. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed hearing about them, and our bees would also like to say thank you. So with that, thank you very much.